Some chemical equations are more difficult to balance than others. So we've already seen how to balance combustion reactions and reactions that involve polyatomics. And those can be done virtually stepwise. However, when you run into a reaction that doesn't fit into one of those classes, here we offer a set of general steps that you can use to try to balance a more complex chemical reaction. The first step is that you want to balance elements that appear on only one compound on either side of the reaction. Then balance elements that appear in more than one compound on either side of the reaction. Then balance elements that appear in their elemental form. And by elemental form we mean that there is a molecule or atom with just one element inside of it. And we want to do this last. Then, as always with balancing questions, you can check your answer. So here I've given you a general reaction that we're going to use as an example. The first thing you want to do is to look at how many different elements there are to balance. So this reaction has carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Then you want to find the elements that appear in only one compound on either side. And this is carbon and hydrogen. So when you look, only one of the molecules contains carbon on the left hand side and only one of the molecules contain a carbon on the right hand side. And the same is true for hydrogen. One molecule contains hydrogen on the left, one molecule contains hydrogen on the right. So we are going to balance these two first. When looking at carbon, we have two carbons on the left and one carbon on the right. So I'm going to balance this by putting a stoichiometric 2 in front of carbon dioxide. With hydrogens, we have eight hydrogens on the left, we have two hydrogens on the right, and we are going to balance the hydrogens by putting a stoichiometric 4 in front of water. Now we want to balance elements that appear in more than one compound on either side of the reaction. And the only element that fits this requirement is oxygen. When we look at the reaction, oxygen is actually in two molecules on the right hand side of the equation. During this step, we want to take extra precautions to make sure that we are counting oxygens correctly because the oxygens are actually in two different compounds. So when I look at the reaction, we have four oxygens on the left, and then we have four times one, so four oxygens coming from water, and then two times two, or four oxygens coming from CO2. So we have eight oxygens on the right-hand side. To balance the oxygens, we put a stoichiometric 2 in front of the N2O4. That will give us 8 oxygens on both sides. In the last step, we look for elements that appear in an elemental form. By this we mean an atom or molecule that only has one element. So the only molecule that fits this description is N2, so there's only nitrogen in there. And we want to balance this last because when we change the stoichiometric coefficient on nitrogen, it will not affect any of the other elements. So we want to do this last. So when we look, we have two nitrogens here, and then two times two or four nitrogens from N2O4. Overall, we have six nitrogens on the left-hand side of the reaction. On the right-hand side of the reaction, we have N2, so there's only two nitrogens on the right-hand side of the reaction. We're going to balance the nitrogens by putting a stoichiometric 3 in front of N2, and that will give us 6 nitrogens on both sides of the reaction. As always, we can take a second and check our answers. So if we go through, we have 2 carbons on the left, 2 carbons on the right, 8 hydrogens on the left, and 4 times 2, 8 hydrogens on the right. We have 2 times 4, or 8 oxygens on the left, and then 4 times 1, 4 from water, and 2 times 2, 4 oxygens from CO2, so we have 8 oxygens on the right. We have 2 nitrogens here, and then 2 times 2, or 4 nitrogens from N2O4, so overall we have 6 nitrogens on the left. And then here we have 3 times 2, or 6 nitrogens on the right. So we know that we have balanced this reaction correctly.